Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, from today, uh, we are going to start API testing uh, classes. And as part of today's session, uh, we are going to see the fundamentals like uh, what is an API and uh, what kind of testings we do on part of, as part of API testing. And before discussing about API testing, we have to know some basics about what is client, what is server, and how exactly web applications works internally. Right, so we need to have some basic knowledge on uh, web testing also to before starting API testing. Okay, and uh, in the today session, we will see some basics. Uh, we will understand. We will try to understand some basic concepts, and then we will try to understand what is an API testing and uh, how we can conduct API testing and uh, what are the different tools are available in the market to perform API testing. Okay, so that's the basic introduction part. Today we are going to see, and at the end of the session. Uh, if you have any questions you can ask me and meanwhile you can use chat window to post all your questions okay right. so first of all uh, let us see uh, the basic like what is web application so what is actually software a software can be an application which is developed for specific client or specific customer right so software application software is a, an application which is developed for specific client or some customer or sometimes the software can be developed based on the market requirement also and which is basically called as a products right so where exactly api testing come into picture so there are various types of testing we will conduct on software like web testing api testing mobile app testing performance testing security testing there are so many types of testings normally we do on software so why we need to do all these kinds of testing because we need to uh, release the quality product or quality software to the customer. So that's the main end goal, right? So API is also one of the testing. API testing is also one of the testing, which is very, very important to do uh, on the software. But normally uh, web testing, we will know what is web testing means. We will test that application, the functionality we will test with respect to customer requirement, whether it's working according to customer requirement or not. The functionality wise, we will test on the web UI. But what is an API means? API is basically uh, the API testing we will conduct at the backend side. So we don't see anything on the UI. So we will do API testing on the backend side. So which is basically comes under backend testing, like API testing, database testing. So these things comes under backend testing, not a front end. And web testing is comes under the front end. Okay, web testing. So we have also different tools are available in the market. Like to perform web testing, we use Selenium normally. And to perform API testing, we use uh, Postman and REST Assure, SOAP UI, and so many tools are there in the market. So different for different type of testings, we have a different tools are available in the market. And for API testing also, we can do manually and also we can do automatically. And to perform manual API testing, normally we use a tool called Postman. And then uh, to perform automation testing, we will use a REST assured. Okay, so one is a manual testing tool, the other one is an automation testing. So as part of this course, we are going to learn both. So first we will learn Postman tool. And a few days, uh, we will try to understand what is Postman, how to use Postman, how we can test APIs manually by using Postman and what are the different features are there in the Postman. So we'll try to understand. And uh, we will practically test all the APIs by using Postman tool. And once you understand manual testing of APIs, then we will move on to the automation part. That is REST assured. So in the REST assured, we will try to automate the APIs. And to automate APIs using REST assured, the main prerequisite is what? You have to know uh, Java basics, Java programming basics. And uh, then you should also know uh, some basics of test in G framework. Okay, so if you learn web testing, uh, these two things will be part of your web testing. Okay, and even if you don't know test ng, no problem, but at least we have to know some Java basics. Okay, how we can write a simple Java program. If you know some basics of Java, you can easily understand this. Okay, and it is very easy to learn also. And even web testing is something trickier than API testing. And you can easily learn API testing and very simple and very easy to learn. Only thing is you need to know some basic Java concepts. Okay, so uh, let us try to understand some basics of uh, uh, web applications and uh, then we will discuss more about what is an API and uh, what are the different testings we will conduct as part of API and so on. Okay, so first we will see a manual testing of APIs using Postman tool 
and once you understand the api testing using manual process then we will try to uh, learn automating apis by using rest assured so these are the two tools which are part of our uh, sessions okay so let me share a small presentation and to understand uh, about web applications and so on and very important session so because if you are not understood these sessions or these important points then uh, it is very difficult to understand the rest of the things okay yeah so java basics are not part of the session so it's not part of the course okay you have to already and uh, if you don't know java basics so uh, please go through my free sessions which are available on my youtube channel and you can understand some basics and people who are already attended uh, cilium sessions and who already know java basics and they are enough okay all right so first of all let us see what is client and server so these two terminologies we use normally while working with the web based applications client and the server so what is client and what is server a simple understanding is server means what which contains the actual application so which contains a actual application or software will run on the server and we will able to access through the client client is nothing but what from where we are accessing the application right so for example on the web application suppose you are typing google.com and uh, we are able to access google pages from the server and we are not uh, those pages are not coming from your local system right so they are coming from somewhere else and we are trying to access them through browser right so from where you are trying to access that is called as a client from where actually the software is installed or from where exactly the web pages are uh, still exist that is basically called as a server okay so the definitions wise a client is a computer hardware device or a software that accesses a service made available by the server so the definitions are little bit tricky but simple way to understanding is a client is a uh, a computer or from where we are trying to access the application so for example uh, through browser we are able to browse the different pages different websites we are able to access and that is comes under the client so from where we are trying to access the applications that is called as a client and uh, actually where the applications are uh, installed from where we are able to exactly uh, accessing that is basically called as a server and uh, between the client and server we need a connection so through internet we are able to establish a connection to the server and then we are able to access it so the basic understanding client and the server the client means what we are all clients because we are able to access the application through browser that's a client and from where exactly we are getting those pages you are browsing so much of information in the internet from where we are getting all that information where exactly that available is in the server and sometimes these servers many times the servers will be in the remote locations or remote environment okay but in some organizations uh, they will also keep the servers in this local environment but normally in the internet uh, the servers will be there in the remote uh, environment so we will able to access them through urls okay so through urls so for example just we are browsing some website right so when i say uh, google.com it is just sending some request here and immediately i'm getting the page right so here we are accessing the application by passing some url by sending some url and this is a client as a user i'm able to access the applications through browser this is the client and uh, from where we are getting these pages from where we are getting all this information where exactly these information is available that is called as a server and when you send some request to the server in the form of url which will give us to response the server will respond with some data okay for example here i am typing uh, let's say api testing i am searching for something so i got all these pages so from where i got all these pages the server is respond to us so how why server is respond to us because we are sending the request when you're searching for something the request will go to the server and server will fetch the all the information related to this this particular keyword and then respond with all the content so from the client application we are able to browse the data or we are able to uh, we are requesting the server to provide some data and the server will fetch the data related to this keyword 
and sending all this information. So this is how exactly client and server works. And the client is not always a browser. Uh, most of the times we will use mobile also, right? In the mobile also, we are using some apps. That is also client. Okay. And from where, wherever we are browsing the data through internet, they're all comes under the client applications. And where exactly those pages are exist, from where they are exactly operating, from there exactly the software installed, that is comes under the server. So this is a basic terminology which we need to understand. What is a client and what is a server, which is very, very important, especially when you are working with the web-based applications. Now to understand this more about, and we need to also know something about architecture, client server architecture, how exactly these client and servers will be communicated. And what are the different type of architectures uh, the web-based applications will follow? And these are basic fundamentals, like we have one tier architecture, two tier architecture, and then we have also a three tier architecture. And web applications mostly followed three tier architecture. Okay, web applications will follow three tier architecture. So let us try to understand what exactly one tier, two tier, and a three tier. So one tier applications, one tier architecture is nothing but what we have a single system. We do not have any internet. We have a single system where the client will be running client and there will not be any database actually there will be some files let's say uh, i'm using some notepad i'm typing something or i'm typing something in the ms word or excel sheet and when you're saving those files where exactly we are saving the data in our same machine right in the same machine in the file format we are saving the data and for that we don't need any internet for that we don't need to maintain any databases Right, so these are all one tier architecture. So if your client and a server, server here is nothing but a file system. So when you run client and server in the same machine, which is comes under one tier architecture. So nowadays we do not have such type of applications because this is pretty old technology. And we will keep the uh, client and server both in the single system. Both are running in the single machine, same computer and which is one tier architecture and the two tier architecture means what we have uh, multiple client servers client computers and they're accessing the database and this database will be there in some other machine okay some other machine we will use as a database server and different client applications will access the same database so for example internet applications Suppose if you go to any bank, right, any uh, banking organization, so they will internally maintain their own servers and their staff will access the database. Suppose in their uh, organization, let's say 10 to 15 people are working, all of them are accessing the same database server, which is located in their environment locally. And that is comes under two tier architecture. So two tier is nothing but what different clients will able to access single database server. And this database server is a different machine, not on the same machine. So these people, let's say 10 people are accessing, these 10 people don't have their own local memory. So whatever the, uh, the, the task they are doing, everything is happen in the common database. And here, this is a two tier architecture. When you come to the three tier architecture, again, this is divided into three parts and the client tier, business logic, and a database layer. We can say this is client application, this is a application server or web server, and the database server. So we can divide it into three parts. So here client is nothing but what we are, we are all clients, we are browsing the data from the browser. And database is what actual data will be stored in the database. And between the client and the server, between the client and server, there should be some business logic. Okay, there should be some business logic is running. And what is the responsibility of this business logic layer is, which will take our request from the client and same request will send to the database and fetch the data and again send back to the business logic layer and same business logic will again send the response to the client. So this is an indirect process. So between the client and the database, there will be uh, one more layer is there called business logic layer. We can say business logic, which contains a business logic. Normally, we call them an application server, web servers, many things are there. So overall, we can divide into three parts. So all web applications, 
all web applications comes under three tier architecture or follow the three three tier architecture so there are so many client applications will run business logic layer will be there and after that database layer will be there so these are the two different type of machines located in different locations remote locations so as a client we don't know actually what is happening in the back end so what kind of business logic is executing what kind of database where exactly our data is storing so we it is not visible as a as a client or as a user i cannot see all of them but as a client we will able to browse the data we will able to send the request to the server and we will able to get the response from the server but who is taking the request who is who is processing it who is sending the response those things are completely back end they are invisible to the user so that's how actually web application works so again if i divide it into three parts we can call them as a presentation layer application layer and data layer we can come uh, we can categorize them into two sections or two parts one is presentation layer and then application layer and a data layer presentation layer is nothing but a user interface user interface uh, we are able to access application through browser right that's called presentation layer it will present the data which is uh, from server and application layer means what business logic the application layer contains a business logic even web server is also comes in this particular middle layer application layer web server or we can say application server and web server so these two uh, comes under middle layer and then database layer is a third layer which is also called as a data layer so presentation layer application layer and data layer so every web application will have three components or three sections like a presentation layer application layer and data layer so presentation layer what is the purpose of presentation layer here is which will present the data to the user which is basically called client and what is an application layer which is having business logic and what is the purpose of application layer which will take the request from the presentation layer same request again will send to the data layer and actual data layer contains what which actually contains the data and whatever the request we sent corresponding data will be available in the data layer so application layer will send the same request to the data layer and the data layer fetch the data and again response will be given to the application layer and this application layer again send the response to the presentation layer so this is how exactly web application works between presentation layer application layer and data layer and these three are the three different components of web application now to presentation layer normally to develop the presentation layer web applications or uh, developers will use these technologies like html javascript css so these are all scripting languages so by using these scripting languages the developer will develop the ui or web applications that we can see on the browser so the presentation layer is nothing but a web applications all web applications comes under the presentation layer so these web applications will be developed by the developers by using html javascript and css these are scripting languages and uh, application server application layer right which contains a business logic and who will develop that business logic again developers will develop the business logic by using programming languages like java dot net c sharp python c++ so here actual uh, programming languages came into picture so by using programming languages the developers will develop the business logic and that business logic is resides inside the application layer that's the secondary layer now the third layer data layer which is also called as a database layer database layer is nothing but what here we install some databases like mysql or it can be oracle or sql server mongodb or whatever so many databases are there in the market and we can use one of the database as a database layer which is also called data layer and actual data is resides inside the database only because database only can hold the data and application layer what is the purpose of application layer the processing the processing will be taken care by application layer what is the processing here again we will send the data from the presentation layer we will request and then application layer will get the request and same request again sent to data layer and get the response and same response will be presented on the presentation layer so these three things will internally work for any type of web applications
But as a user, what we can access only in the presentation layer. That means we are able to see the application, we are able to work with the web applications. That is all comes under presentation layer. So application layer, data layer is invisible. So we can't directly access them. Okay. So this is the basic understanding. What is client and server architecture? Okay. So in every tier, like in one tier, two tier, and three tier also, we will have a uh, server. Okay. We can have a server, but the server will be there in the same machine. If you go with the one tier architecture, we can have server in the same machine and two tier architecture also. Uh, multiple machines are there. Two tier means what? Two tier means at least two components should be there. Client is different and server is different. Here, database is acting as a server. So, two different components, two different machines. And in the three tier architecture, again, it is again divided into three components. Client is different, business logic is different, database is different. And these three will be located in three different places. And again, there will be many number of clients, there will be many number of application servers, there will be many number of database servers. But the overall, the architecture level, if we talk, we will convert, we will categorize into three different parts. Client, business logic, which is basically application layer, and then database layer. Okay, presentation, application layer, and data layer. So we need to first understand uh, these three things, very, very important. Okay. Now, let us try to understand more detail. So what is an API now? Okay, so we understood what is presentation layer, what is application layer, what is database layer. But where exactly API come into picture? So what is an API? Now let us try to understand this in detail. API is nothing but an application programming interface. Application programming interface. So this is a full form of API. Application programming interface. So what is the API? Where exactly it resides and what is the purpose of this API? So the API is basically used for or communicating between two applications. Let's say there are two different applications and they want to communicate each other. And there should be some mediator, right? There should be some mediator. And that is basically called as an API. So API is a way of communication between two applications where applications may differ in their platforms or in terms of technology. So those applications will be developed in different platforms and those applications will be having different functionality but still we will combine those applications we can communicate each other by using api so for example let us take here front-end applications we have a front-end application here so in the front-end application this is basically web right so this is basically web application so this is our web so uh, we discuss three layers. One is for presentation layer. So this is called presentation layer. And this is called uh, a middle layer. We can say application layer or application server, or we can say a web server in the middle layer. And this is called backend application, or we can say data layer or data, database server. Okay, three components. So what, what in the web application, in the presentation layer, what we will do, we will try to access that application through UI. And we are sending some requests to the middle layer, which is actually API layer. Here, actual APIs will be reside. So API is nothing but what, which contains a business logic. So as we already discussed, in the middle layer, we have a business logic reside. But the business logic is available in the form of APIs. The business logic is nothing but an API. So API contains a business logic, which is developed by the developers. So when you're sending the request to the uh, server or when you're sending the request, first it will go to the middle layer. And what is there in the middle layer? We have different type of APIs. So many types of APIs are available in the middle layer. And based on our request, corresponding API will be triggered and that API, what that API will do again, that API will send the same request to the server that is a database layer and fetch the data here and provide the response to the presentation layer. And who is, send, who is uh, taking the request, who is sending the response to us? API, okay? API is taking the request and API is itself sending the response to the presentation layer. So that means API is acting as a mediator between presentation layer and the database layer. And where exactly these APIs are present? The APIs are present inside the 
middle layer, middle layer, which is business logic, which contains a business logic. So which will do two things. What is the first thing? This is the responsibility of the API layer to fetch the data from the back end and display on the front end. And the other side, what is the responsibility of API? This is also the responsibility of the API layer to take the data from the front end and insert into the back end. So it will take the data, it will take the request from the front end, again send to the back end and get the response and provide the same response to the front end or presentation layer. And this is a mediator application programming interface. There is a full form actually, API, application programming interface. What does that mean? Which is basically an application. Application means what? Which contains some functionality and which is assisting to the application. Where exactly we are using application? Here we are using application. So what API is doing? API is getting the request from the application, sending response to the application. So it is an application. Programming means what? Which contains a programming logic and which is also an interface. Means what? It is acting as a mediator or acting as an interface between our front end and our back end applications. So that's the reason the name says API application programming interface. And where exactly these APIs are resides? In the middle layer. In the middle layer, APIs will be available. Now, when you perform the testing, on this particular layer, which is comes under web testing. Okay, we use Selenium here. And when you directly conduct the testing in this particular layer, which is called as a API testing. So when you conduct the testing in the database layer, which is called as a database testing. Three different layer. Okay, and one thing we need to understand. So if you want to test the web or web testing, if you want to perform, through browser, we are able to access the web application. So we are able to see the, the entire UI and we are able to interact with the elements and we will be able to perform the web testing. But how come we testing the APIs? And why we need to test the APIs here? So if you conduct the testing web, right? So from where exactly we are getting the data in the web application? API is only providing the data, right? Through APIs, we are getting the response on the UI. And what exactly we are validating on the web applications? We are validating the data. We are validating the functionality on the website or web testing side, right? But from where exactly we are getting the data, from where exactly we are getting this functionality, only through APIs we are getting this. And if the APIs are not available, our web applications will not work because the web application is actually need the data and functionality, which is actually coming from what? middle layer api is providing that so we are doing the testing on the website but what kind of testing we do on here we will do api testing as part of api testing what we will do we will instead of testing this web application we are directly sending the request to the api and we are getting the response from the api and we will test the response we will do some validations on the response same thing is happening the front end also for example when you're testing the web applications when you're testing the here web so what exactly what you are testing here is whatever the response uh, provided by the api so because when you send some request through web application APIs are giving the response and this response we are testing on the ui so instead of testing on the ui what we will do directly we will access the apis and we will send the request to the API directly and we'll get the response from the API directly and we do the testing here. So this is an API testing. So instead of doing testing on the web, we will directly do the testing on the APIs that comes under the API testing. But what is an advantage? So do we get any benefit when you do the testing on APIs? Yes. So what are the benefit we will get when you test the API? So normally what happens is, in the real-time environment, initially, they will develop the database first. So the day, first they will ready the database. And then they will develop the APIs. And then they will develop the web. So these are the three different things will be developed in three different times by different people. So database developers will be different. API developers will be different. Web developers will be different. They are having different technologies. They should know different type of technologies. Okay, now 
initially they will develop the databases and then APIs will be developed by the developers and then web will come into picture. So between these two, there will be a lot of time. Okay, first they will develop all the APIs and once the APIs are ready, then they develop the web. Because if APIs are not available, there is no use of web, right? If they're in, yeah, they have all, everything is implemented on the UI. So login is there, image is there, everything, links are present, everything is present in the web UI. But when you perform some activity, it's not working anything. So when you do login, it's not working. When you click on the link, it's not working because APIs are not yet ready. So without APIs, if you have only web application, there is no use. So first they have developed the APIs. On top of the APIs, they will develop the web, which is they will develop the web application. So web application work based on the APIs. So the first development will happen on the APIs and then the next level development will happen on the web based on the APIs. So as soon as the APIs are ready or developed by the developer, if you conduct testing on APIs, if you do testing on APIs, so we can do less testing on the web because almost if you come, if you complete 80% of the testing here on the UI side, we will just do only 20% of the testing. You no need to do complete testing. So why? Because the same APIs will provide the response taking the request from the web. So whatever the response or API is giving to the web, right here, we will test it. But instead of doing testing here, we directly send the request and get the response from the API and we do the testing. We do the response validations. So here itself, we will finish 70 to 80% of the testing and rest of the testing, we will do some basic level testing on the UI, like all the UI elements are aligned properly or not, fonts are correct or not, colors are properly uh, put or not. So all colors are correctly mentioned or not. So just we do some UI testing, but main functionality testing is done at the API level itself because API itself is providing the data to the our web application. So instead of testing web application directly, we can test the API functionality that will reduce a lot of our time and that will reduce a lot of our effort. Okay, so this is a main purpose of doing API testing. So this is actually what is an API. So API is nothing but what? Application programming interface. Why it is an application programming interface? Because which is uh, working for the application and it contains a programming logic and which is acting as an interface between presentation layer and the database layer. So that is the reason we can call it as an API, application programming interface. And uh, these APIs will be used to communicate between two different type of applications. Let us say this is one type of application, this is another type of application. So these two things will be communicated with the API. Okay, we can communicate with this. This is one way of understanding this. Okay, so yeah, we can do functional testing in the API level. Okay, so in that case, in the web, web level, we no need to do functional testing. We will just do the UI testing. Okay, so if the functional testing is done on the API level and the web application, what you will do, you will just test the GUI testing, graphical user interface. So all elements are properly aligned or not, alignment, existing colors, okay, font, these things we will just validate on the UI if you conduct functional testing on the API level. And there is one more thing, even web application is communicating with the API or not. So the communication also we need to test properly, right? So that's the reason we should also do some kind of testing on the UI. And we should not rely completely on API. At the same time, we should not rely completely on the GUI. Both are important. Both are important to do it. But most of the testings, if we conduct or if we complete on the API level, we can do less testing on the GUI. Okay, so we can put less effort or less time we can spend on the GUI testing. If you do, uh, if you spend more time on the API testing. So that's the main advantage. And moreover, we no need to wait for the GUI. Like as soon as the API's development is completed, you no need to wait for GUI for testing because it will take some time to uh, develop right so in the meanwhile itself we will directly test the APS and once the, you get the application or GUI then you can start testing the GUI and that's the process normally we follow so first level of testing we do on APS level and then next level once you get an UI and once the UI is developed then we will conduct the testing on the GUI so that's how things will happen so because this will take some time 
immediately it is not ready. Okay, so before that API should be ready. So we will do most of the testings on API. And once the UI is available, then we will do some part of the testing on the UI. Both are available. Both are important. Okay. So this is how we need to understand what is that exactly API means and where exactly API come into picture. Okay. So the programming language will be used to develop the APIs. Application development will be done by using scripting languages. Scripting languages, I told in the previous slide here. But just look at here in my previous slide. So presentation layer, that's not web application, will be developed by using HTML, JavaScript, CSS. So these are the scripting languages will be used. And to develop the APIs, programming languages will be used like Java, .NET, C Python. So by using these programming languages, APIs will be designed or APIs will be developed. So the languages will be different. So even developers are also different. Web developers are different. Programmers are different. Database developers are different. Okay, so everyone is not having the same kind of a skill set. So web development will be taken care by some other people and database layer will be taken care by somebody else and APIs or business logic will be developed by some other developers. So different team members, different things will be done. Okay, we should not club all the technologies into one category, but overall they will work for the one goal. That is, they want to develop an application. They want to develop a software. Okay, so this is the basic understanding what exactly client and server and uh, then we have understood three tier architecture like front end, middle layer, back end. And also we have understood what exactly AP means. And we will try to understand with more examples. So in this context, what is an API? API is an application programming interface, which is contains a business logic. And here front end is one application. We can consider back end is also another application. So these two will communicate each other through API. Through API, they will communicate each other. Okay, so to understand uh, more detail API, let's take the simple example. So let us say, uh, let's take one restaurant, okay, to understand what exactly the API, how it will work. So let us take the restaurant an example. So to the restaurant, a customer come to the restaurant. Let's say he is called consumer, okay, and there will be a waiter also. And uh, oh, as a customer, what I'll do, I'll order for the food. Okay, so waiter will take the order and uh, waiter will not prepare any food, right? So what waiter will do, he will go to the kitchen and the same request will send to the chef, right? So as a customer, I will order the food, which is basically called as a request and waiter will receive the request and the same request sent to the kitchen and chef will prepare the food in the kitchen. So we can consider this as a back end. So once the kitchen is, uh, once the food is prepared, then respond. Right, the waiter will again uh, provide the food to the customer. So if I just look at these three different things, based on this example, we can understand what exactly API will do. So here he is a client. He is a client or customer, and waiter is acting as an API role, application programming interface, and chef is acting as a database layer. So actual food will be prepared here. So as a customer, I am requesting the food to the waiter and what a waiter is doing same request is again forward to the database layer and in the database layer actually the food will be prepared at the kitchen and once the food is prepared the same response will be given to the waiter and this waiter will provide the food to the customer so here if you just look at three things are happening so one is request from here request is happening same request will go here again go to the database and same response we are getting here and customer will get the food. So here, this waiter is acting as an API role, application programming interface. He is a mediator between the customer or client and the backend. So this is, he is the guy, he is a communicator between the two things. Okay, so based on this example, we can understand what exactly API means, how exactly it will work. Okay, now let us try to understand more. So if I just look at this, okay, just a second. Okay, so let's take this uh, application example. Let's say make my trip. So make my trip.com. So this is a website. 
and uh, internally this website is using different type of apis okay so internally this website is using different type of apis so how exactly applications will internally use apis so let us try to understand so what we understood what is an api api means through the api we will able to communicate between two applications right so if i just look at this make my trip.com so this is an application so what we can do in this application in this application we can find the available flights or we can find available hotels so a lot of things we can find right so as a user right i'm just want to uh, book a flight ticket so i can provide some data to this my make my trip okay i can search what are all flights are available by sending some data so this is called request okay this is called request i am sending some information from where i need to travel from where i should go so on what date i i want to travel so this information i will provide so that is called request and what make my trip will know how make my trip will work again it will get the data from the different airlines like different type of airlines we have so each airline is different each airline is having different flights so how make my trip will get the data about these airlines so the same data whatever we provided same data again they will send to this api so these apis are exposed by these airlines different airline companies are having their own apis so they will expose their own apis so whatever data we have requested to make my trip the same data again resend to those apis and what these apis will do these apis will give some response to us and what are the different flights are available from those airlines and these flight information will be again displayed to the customer so how this make my trip is getting all the information from different airlines through the different apis and make my trip is not developed those apis they are just using those apis by sending the request and getting the response and these apis are developed from whom so these apis are developed by their own companies their own companies so let me show you one more example for example every day almost we everyone uh, we use google maps right so we are using google maps so google map is an api actually so which is developed by whom so google is developed their own apis actually google is a owner for all google related apis google maps apis but these google maps we can use in different applications so we are using in uber we are using in whatsapp or we are using any other travel applications but these applications are not exactly developed the google maps but these applications are using the google maps through the apis through the apis so google is a owner for those apis google is a owner for those apis google is developed those apis but they apis are exposed to the public so for example in the whatsapp you can share your location to somebody else but internally location you are sharing means what google maps apis internally uh, integrated so whatsapp is basically requesting google maps api to provide the location so there's a integration but whatsapp is not developed google map or google map apis it cannot locate anything but it is internally calling google maps and google map is providing the directions so like this if any company is developed some apis and if they are exposed to those apis to the public everybody will able to use those apis everybody else can use those apis in their applications they no need to again develop the same thing so whatever is already developed and that is available through api and other applications will use it okay for example you have a google account you have a google account so with this google account you are able to log in into facebook you are using the same account to the linkedin you are able to use same account for some other thing right so different applications are using same login purpose but how this facebook how this linkedin applications will know about your google google account how these applications will know about this google account because internally the facebook when you signing up the facebook when i use google account the facebook will request this google through api and through this api they will check whether your account is valid or not if it is valid then they will allow us to log in similarly when you use google account to log into the linkedin 
what linkedin will do linkedin will request to the google through the api whether the account is valid or not if it is valid then api uh, check api will send the request and get the response and in the response they will check is it valid or not then accordingly it will allow or not they will decide so how these applications are interacting with the google account or google because of apis so based on this we can understand api is a tool through api we are able to communicate between two different applications google is a different application facebook is a different application linkedin is a different application but we are using same account for all applications or not yes we are using the same account for all applications how these applications will know about our account through api request they will come to know whether our login or whether our account is valid or not so that's how internally apis work so nowadays every web application internally use apis internally use apis so all the functionality of your application provided only through apis okay if suppose some functionality is not working means what some api is not up and running so for example uh, on your application okay on your application you are trying to access some functionality okay suppose there is a, uh, some feature called search and they say you, you have some feature on your web application and you are searching for something here and you are pressing enter key and you are not getting some data here you are not getting proper results what does it mean when you searching for something you are requested something to the server and maybe your api is down or your database is down sometimes in those cases what happen you will not get the proper response and your application is not responsible for that so for particular api or particular database is sometimes down in those cases you will not get proper response so even application functionality is also works based on api request and response so if you do the testing in the api level 80% of the testing if you do the testing on the api level, only rest of the 20% of the testing you can do on the web application it will reduce a lot of time and also effort okay so this is a basic understanding what is an api where exactly api come into picture and what we do as part of api testing okay let's understand a few more things so what are the different types of apis so how many types of apis we have so basically we have two types of apis in the market like we have soap you are soap apis soap related apis and rest apis okay soap is nothing but a simple object access protocol rest is nothing but a representational state transfer so these are the two different type of apis are available in the market but soap apis are very very old one so very less number of companies are still using it very very less and uh, most of the companies almost 80% of the companies are using rest services nowadays so soap is having their own technology actually so they internally use xml to process the data and so on but that is a very old technology but uh, in rest is a latest technology so many of the companies nowadays are using rest apis so soap and rest so these two all two tools uh, these two apis internally use a different type of uh, technology different type of communications and different type of uh, data okay so soap support only xml type of data but rest support xml json html text different type of data is also supported while you are communicating with the server but soap support only xml format and this is very uh, uh, xml is very uh, lengthy and that's very complex also sometimes when you compare with the json's and uh, it's very weighted uh, data will be sent to the server so just try to understand these are the two types of apis which we have in the market and soap is very old uh, type of apis and rest is a latest one so both are uh, apis only okay but sometimes we use something called web service so this is a term also normally we use web service so we need to understand this also what is api what is web service what is the difference okay sometimes we will use a uh, web service this is a name is also very popular okay so what is an api what is a web service see uh, when you what is an api we have understood so far is we basically api will get the request from us and it will give some response to us so it will take some request it will give the some response that's a job api is done right 
but what is web service what web service will do it's very same actually so when you keep this api in the internet or if it is available on the web that is called web service simple so suppose there is one application okay and there is another application let's say this is my google application and this is my facebook application and how these two are communicating each other through the api and if this api is available on the internet or if this api is available on the web then these two applications will be able to communicate so once you place this api in the internet that is called as a web service simple so when you keep this api inside this internet and everyone able to access that api that is basically called as a web service that means what all web services are apis only all web services are apis but all apis are not web services because until unless we keep this in the internet we cannot say that is a web service and without having internet also we can create our apis we can test our apis on your local systems so internet is not required for designing and development of apis and testing apis internet is not required okay and once you conduct the testing and once everything is working fine then we will move it to the production environment and we make that available that api is available for the public and that time we will call them as a web service so web service and api technically they are same technically they are same but once you put this api in the internet that is called as a web service okay so at the time of development and testing apis will not be there in the production let's say developer develop some api and uh, development is happening and then testing will happening and while developing and testing the apis we no need in internet okay so they are not available for the public so far they are developing and testing in internally within the company so we can call them just apis just apis which will take the request and which will give some response okay and at the time of development and testing we call them as a aps even internet is also not required but once the development and testing is completed once the api is working fine then we will make this api is available in the internet because other applications also can use this apis just like google map google maps are designed developed by the google they have tested it and after testing what they have done they have make available those apis to the public so that we are able to access it so that is web service so as soon as this api is developed and tested once they move to the production and make it available for the public public is able to access these apis then which is called as a web service okay only simple difference web service that means what all web services are what apis but all apis are not web services until unless we move them into the production until unless we move them into the internet we can't call them as a web service it is just an api clear everyone the difference between api and web service so uh, at the time of development and testing we just call as a api we should not say that is a web service and once it is developed and tested once they moved into the internet and which is available for the public to access then we call them as a web service once they moved into the web environment which is called as a web service okay so all web services are basically apis but not all apis are web service when when this api become web service once they moved into production once they moved into the internet once they available for the public then we can call them as a web service until then they are just apis not web services so guys is it clear the difference between api and web service most important entry question difference between api and web service please respond in the chat window guys okay now let us see the next one so types of apis we discussed and also the different types like api and web service 
So web service and API wrapped in HTTP, internally they will use HTTP protocol and all web services are API, but APIs are not web services. Remember this point. And when APIs are become web service, once we move the APIs into production or in web environment, once we make available them to the public, then they become the web service. So a web service needs a network while API doesn't need any network for its operation. We can test the APIs without internet also. In the locally also, we can test the APIs. And once they move into the production and web, then we can access the APIs through internet. Okay, so this is the basic difference between API and web service. Now let us try to understand more about REST APIs. So we are going to discuss more on REST APIs, but not SOAP APIs. Okay, so what is REST API? So REST API is nothing but is one of the type type of the REST API. So in the REST API, basically uh, we take the request from the user or client, and we will the same request will send to the server, and server will process the data, fetch the data, and same uh, response will be given to the customer. So how exactly REST API works? So REST API is having different type of methods, guys. Okay. So REST API methods. So these methods normally we use, like we have a get method, we have a post method, we have a put method, we have a delete method, and there are so many other methods also there, but mainly we will use only four methods, get, post, put, and delete methods. What are those methods means? They are REST API methods, or we can also call as a request, HTTP request, HTTP request. See. Whatever you do on the web, whatever application you're accessing, whatever transaction that you're doing, all the transactions, all the operations will comes under at least one type of request. Okay. For example, you are browsing the google.com. Okay. So you're opening the google.com here. When you're sending google.com, when you press enter, normally what type of request it will go to the server? It will go to server and get the response so basically it will send a get request so what exactly we are doing is we are trying to get some data from the google.com so here we are requesting something from the google so when you type something here what we are doing exactly we are requesting something related to this keyword requesting some data from the google that means we are sending the get request get is nothing but what it will send some response to us Okay, that's called get request. This is one of the request. And then we have a post request. Post is nothing but what? Suppose if you want to create something in the database server. Okay, if you want to create something, sometimes you will create your user. You will provide all your first name, last name, email, phone number, everything. And when you submit it, what will happen? The same data will be stored in the database. But you will not get any response. You are just sending the data to the database. And that is called as a post request. So get request is nothing but what? We will get the response from the server. And post request is nothing but what? We are sending our data to the server to store. Okay, we are sending our data to the server, which will store. That is happen through post request. Suppose I already have some data in my database on server. I want to update the data. I want to edit the data. Then we can send a put request. So put is another type of request through which we will able to update existing data in the database server. And delete is nothing but what we can delete the data from the database. So for four different type of operations, we will use four different type of REST API methods, get to post, put, delete. So these four are called HTTP request method. So through browser, whatever the request you are sending, that should comes under either get request or post request or put request or delete request. It will comes under one of the requests. So REST API will support these type of request. So one is get request, post request, put patch, delete, and so many other things are there. Main like categories to four types of request. Similarly, in the response, what the response contains, response contains some status code, data, so many things are there. We will do certain validations on the response. That means we are request, we are passing some request to the API. API will provide some response and then we do some validations on the response. That's how API testing will be conducted. 
So first of all, we have to know what is the functionality of API, what kind of input we have to pass to the API. And then we will try to understand what kind of response it should return or what kind of response it should provide to the user. And once you know the request and response, then we can test the API. So before testing API, you have to know the functionality of the API. The functionality of the API, what exactly the API will do, what is the purpose of API, why it is designed, what type of input it will take, what type of request it will accept, what kind of response it will provide, and what is the content which we have to test in the response. So these things we need to first analyze before doing API testing. So in API testing, we have mainly four methods, get, post, put, and delete. And what is the use of this get? If you want to receive some information from the database, right? So then we will send the get request. So receive information about an API resource. And similarly, create an API. If you want to create something in the database, then we will use a post request. Or if you want to update anything in the database, then we will use put request. Or if you want to delete something in the database, then we will use a delete request. So get, post, put, delete. These are the four different type of requests supported in REST API. Only through request, through these type of requests, we will uh, use APIs and we will validate APIs. And then HTTP and HTTPS. And this is another important thing which we need to understand. HTTP is based HTTP and HTTPS, hypertext transfer protocol, hypertext transfer protocols more secure. These two are different type of protocols used by web applications. Web applications in the sense internally APIs also will use these protocols to communicate between the client and the server. So what is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? HTTPS is a more secure communication will happen. Suppose when you're sending the data through the client application to the server, your data will be transferred as it is in the original format. So if your data is passing through the network in the original format, there is a chance of hacking the data. So they are not more secure. But if your web application is using HTTPS, and that data is more secure. So when you're sending some request or data, which will be converted into encrypted format and throughout the network, the data will be transported through encrypted format and then it will reach to the server. Again, their deprecation will happen and process will happen. So basically the data is communicating or data is transforming through the network in the encrypted format. And that is more secure. Sometimes when you're browsing some web pages also, you can see HTTP and HTTPS protocol. So you can see HTTP is nothing but what here you can see. So you can just copy this. So you can just ping any website. It will show you some HTTP or HTTPS. See here, or let me just type something and say google.com I'm opening. So this is the page I'm opening. You can see here. This is a page I have opened. Now, if I just look at this before starting the URL, you can see something here. And if you see HTTPS needs nothing but that website is more secure. Okay, the data will be sending through encrypted format. But if some website you can see only HTTP, that means what the data is sending in the original format, they are not secure websites. Okay, so you need to understand this. What is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? And now we need to understand a few important terminologies before going to API testing, like URI, URL, and URN. URI is nothing but a uniform resource identifier. URL is nothing but uniform resource locator. URN is uniform resource name. So where exactly these come into picture? So we need to understand about the URL. Let us take this URL. So HTTPS colon slash slash google.com articles article. There is some URL is there. So we can call this completely as one URL. Uniform resource locator. Uniform resource locator. This completely we can call them as URL or URA. Uniform resource identifier or uniform resource locator. But again, which contains multiple parts. So here HTTP or HTTPS, which is called as a protocol or we can call them as a uh, scheme. And this part is a host, google.com or something, amazon.com. 
flipcode.com so that's basically host or we can also call as a domain where exactly our data is present and rest of this is called as a path so here http or https is called as a protocol and this part is called a host or domain and rest of the part is called path. So in this particular domain or in this particular host or in this particular server, where exactly our data is present. So in the articles folder, in the article name, this is called actually resource, which is actually called as a resource. In a web application, when you ping any URL, this is complete URL. So this is one part and this is another part. This is another part. So actually, which one will face the data in the server? only this one will fetch the data. So first it will go to the articles and then it will go to article name and wherever the data is here, this will be and this data will be written from the server. Okay. And this is a path. So what is URN means what? Uniform resource name. Actually, what is the actual resource here? This is the actual resource. What is a resource here? Resource. This is a technical term. Resource is something which is available in the server. For what we are requesting? Resource is something which is there in the server, which we can request. So when you send some request to the API, what API will do? API will send the same request to the server. And in the server, whatever we requested, that information is there or not. And this is called as a resource. So whatever we are requesting for, that information is available in the server, right? So that is called as a resource. So whenever you are sending some request, it will try to fetch the resource. And that resource information is also available in this URL. This is called resource. This is called resource name, uniform resource name, URN. We can call them as a URN. Okay, so what is an endpoint? What is an endpoint? And this is another point, end point. End point is nothing but this part. Again, this path entire thing is comes under the end point. Other than this host, other than this host. Okay, so other than this host, whatever the rest of thing is there, that is called end point. Okay, that's called end point. Okay, so other than here, till here we are host, this is server actual data will be stored. And from this rest of thing, whatever is there, that's called endpoint. And endpoint is also include path, URN, and then uh, resource. Okay, resource is also this is actually a resource, and this is a path. And both combinedly we can call as an endpoint. Okay, so the terminology is most important, which we need to understand. And uh, next one, uh, resource. And normally in the web application testing, we call it as a feature, right? Feature is nothing but what is a functionality. It is a term used in manual testing to test some functionality and similar. Similarly, resource is a term used in API automation testing referring some functionality. Resource is nothing but something is there in the server and we are able to access it. That's called a resource. And then next terminology is a payload. Because these terminals is most important while performing API testing is okay. You have to learn, you have to understand this. Payload. What is payload? Payload is nothing but the data which we are sending along with the request, and also the data which is coming along with the response. Both are called payload. Request payload and response payload. Suppose, let us say I have a flight booking application. Okay, so let us say I have one flight booking application and in the flight booking application i will provide my data right i will provide my name right and source and destination place and date i will provide some data when you booking a flight so we we are with this particular data and this is called as a request payload this is called as a request payload and once you send this we will get some response, right? Flight is booked or not with confirmation and a time availability. All the information we will get as a response. And that is called as a response payload. Response payload means what? The payload is nothing but a data. Payload is nothing but a data. And the data which is sending through request, which is called as a request payload, the data which is coming through response, which is called as a response payload. 
Okay, we use these terms very, very frequently in API testing. Please listen this. And the next one is here you can just look at this picture to understand more. So let us say consumer and producer. Consumer is nothing but what? Whoever is sending the request. They are all consumers, or we can call them as a client. And when you send a request, and these are the different things we will pass, like URI, headers, a payload. And this payload can be in JSON format or XML format, we can pass. And once the server is received that request, API is received the request and sent to the database and corresponding HTTP method will be done. Like it can be post, get, put or delete and we'll get the response. Again, when you're getting the response, we will also get some data along with the response. And that is called response payload, like status code and some response data, some string message, you will get something out of the response and that is called response payload. Okay, so this is important thing. And then, uh, so a few more important things. So whenever you perform API testing, what we get in API URL or endpoint. So you need both. Okay, URL is nothing but a complete path. Okay, the complete thing is called URL. URL is nothing but what? The complete URL you are requesting, right? This is complete thing is called URL. What is an endpoint? This part is called endpoint. This part is called endpoint. So when you're performing the API testing, you will get all these endpoints from the developer. Okay. And where exactly the data is hosted. And based on that, this will be changed. The host name can be changed. Okay. Suppose the APIs are deployed in some machine, some X, then the host name will be X. And if the APIs are deployed in Y in some other server, then this host name will be different. But the endpoints will not be changed. The endpoints will not be changed. So when you do API testing, we have to know the endpoints which are provided by the developers. And also they will provide the location where exactly the APIs are deployed. Accordingly, this URL will be changed. And when you're sending the request, when you're sending the get request or post request, we will have to send this complete URL along with the endpoint we have to send. Only endpoint is not enough when you're sending the real request to the API. But at the time of writing the test cases and getting the information developer, so they will provide only the endpoints. And then we will use these endpoints along with the host. And that will make complete API request. Okay. So this is a basic understanding. Now I'm going to show you a few simple and very sample APIs, how exactly these APIs will work. And there are so many websites are there. They will provide uh, so many types of APIs and we can do some kind of testing on those APIs. So URI and URL are the different on same. Both are same. So URI, some people are called URI, Uniform Resource Identifier. And some people are called Uniform Resource Locator. Okay, so the terminology is used by different people in the different purposes. You can consider the entire thing as a URI or URL, or you, some people will consider only some part is called URI. So some people will consider only this part is URI. So that's the reason I put both the points. So this part is called as a URI. Some people will consider. And some people will consider the entire thing as a URI. Except this protocol, remove this protocol, rest of them is considered as a URI. Okay, so the terminology, you have to just understand theoretical uh, differences, not important, but you need to just understand mainly URL and then uh, uh, endpoint. As I said, endpoint, right? Endpoint is different. URL or URI you can consider as the same and endpoint is most important because URL, URI can be changed, but the endpoint will not be changed. Okay. So guys, are you clear so far, everyone? So this is the basic understanding. What exactly API, how exactly API works and what API will do and what's the purpose of an API. Okay, I will show you now few important APIs, few sample APIs, and then we will try to understand few things. And let's go to uh, Google, just a second. Okay, so here we have a sample API, just a second. Uh, 
and request response dot in. So this is provided some sample APIs just for practicing purpose. And we will do so many other APIs also. So just for your understanding, I'm just going to show you a few number of APIs here. So you can just look at this. These are different type of APIs they have provided here. Okay, so these are the different APIs they have provided. And you can just look at this, get, there are so many gets are there, post, put, patch, delete, right? Different type of requests are there. And you can just look at this. This is the request. And this is the response. Okay, suppose the first API, what's the purpose of the first API here is list users. Okay, list users. When you send this request, it will list out all the users which are available in the database. I'm just clicking on the get here. See this, I'm just clicking on the get. As soon as you're clicking on the get, what happens? This is a request actually sent to the server. Okay, this is a request which is actually sent to the server. And this is the response we got. 200 is a response we got. And this is the response data in the JSON format. Okay, so most of the times we use JSON as a request and response. In the next two sessions, I will discuss more about JSON. So this is the response data. So uh, user's email ID, user first name, last name, avatar. So this is this is the information we got it from the server when you send the get request. Okay, this is called payload. Yes, and the same request we can directly send. So for example, this is the host actually. Okay, this is the host. See here. So this is the host. Okay, and uh, what is the endpoint? This is the endpoint. This is the endpoint. So this is the end point. Let me just copy this. Okay, so this is the end point. Let me copy. And just I'm adding the end point to the URL here. Okay. And uh, this is the complete URL, guys. Okay, now if you send this request directly browser like this, you can also get the response. Now you can see this is the response. But here they have given inbuilt options here to send a get request, put request, post requests, and so on. And whenever you click on this button, corresponding request will go and we will get the response. So whatever response you captured here, the same response we also captured here, same response. Okay, this is how we need to send an AB request. This is a get request. So that's the reason we got the data. And similarly, let me send one more. Suppose I want to get the single user data from the database. So I'm sending the get. So you don't need to confuse anything, guys. For now, you can just consider URL, URI is the same. Okay, no confusion. You can consider as the same. URL, URI is the same. Okay, no confusion. That's not much important, actually. Okay, so when you click on the get request, this time, second one, I'm getting the data of the single user single user data I got. Now this time, what is the request it is sent API slash users slash two. And this is, now we got the response to 200. 200 is nothing but what? Successful request. If the request is successfully done, then you will get the 200. And we also have different response codes like 200, 201, 401, 501, different type of responses codes we have based on that we can decide whether the request is successfully completed or not. So now the same request I want to test through my browser, how we can test again, same host, I can put here first. Okay, same host. And what is the endpoint to get the single user? What is the endpoint to get the single user? This is the endpoint API slash users slash two API slash users slash two, I can say API slash users slash two. So when I say two here, I'll get the information about the second user. So let me just copy and send that in the browser. So even through browser also, we can send the request and we can get the response from the API. But everything is not possible through browser. Only get is possible. Get request is possible through browser. But when you do post request or delete request or put request, through browser, it is not possible. Okay, we have to use different tools like Postman. So here only get request is possible through browser. So I'm sending the complete URL here. Then I got the information of the single user. So when I say send to here, I got the ID to here. 
So I got the user information, second user information. Suppose I want to get the third user information. I can say three here. Then I got the third user information. Okay, so I'm sending some request and then I got some response from the API. That is also get request. Now let us see one more type of request. So let us say this is single user not found. And here, this is also get request list of resources and single resources and post request create means what it will go and create a new user in the database for that we will use post request and suppose the user is already available now i want to update then i can use put request and patch is also for update and delete request suppose user is already there then i want to delete the user then i can send a delete request so different purposes we can send different type of request but only through browser get requests are possible post request put request, delete request, these things are not possible through browser. We have to use some other tools. So that's the reason we cannot use here. Okay, payload is nothing but a, the data which we will send through the request. Okay, payload is nothing but the data which will send through request and we'll get some data from the response also, right? That's the payload. For example, I'm sending the get request here. Are we sending any payload along with this request? Guys, please respond. Are we sending any payload with this request? Payload. Are we sending any payload to this request? No, we are not sending any payload. But uh, once you send this request, are we getting some response here? Yes, we are getting some response data, right? This is called payload. Response payload. Response payload. Sometimes you will send post. Send a post request here. Click on the post. When you're sending the post request, okay, we have to send some data also. What is the use of post request, which will create a new record in the database, which will create a new record in the server. And what is the details of that new record we have to pass? Like if you pass a name and a job, accordingly, it will create a new record in the database. So this is called request payload. Along with this request URL, we should also send some data. This is called as a request payload. And this is a response payload. Once you requested to create this data, it is created exactly this time and which is also given some response to us. Okay, so payload is nothing but a data. Request payload is nothing but what? The data which is sending through request along with the request, which is called as a request payload. The data which is getting from the response, which is called as a response payload. Simple. Okay, so these are all sample APIs they have given and uh, and the host is already here. So I just given some endpoints here and uh, we can just explore these APIs directly here. When you click on this get here and when you send this resource, now I got some response here. This is also get request. And suppose when you send a post request, click on post here and now this name and job is sent through this request and we got some response here with the same name and job and with the uh, some created it. Suppose I want to delete some request. So then go to the delete here. And now here we need to pass some delete. Which one is deleted? If we pass two, we will not get any response data here because that data is got deleted. The record is got deleted. The response is what? 204 is a response. So some type of request we have to send payload and some type of request we don't need to send any payload. So 204 is nothing but a no content. Yes, that record, the second record is not there in the database. So it is giving some no content because these are all some dumb, dummy APS. They may not take proper data. They may not give proper records or proper response. And uh, from tomorrow, I will show you the different type of APS, which are real APIs. Exactly, we are going to test. Okay, and these are some dummy API just for your understanding. I'm just showing you these APIs, a different type of request. And get request, we can also send through browser also, but post request, put request, delete request, these type of requests we cannot send. So you need to understand one important thing, guys. Whenever you test an API, okay, whenever you test an API, we have to pass some request, we have to pass some input. Let us take any API. We need to pass some request and we will get some response. 
and as part of the request what you will pass you will pass the data and you will pass the url sometimes you will pass some keys some pass sometimes you will pass some authenticated information lot of things we have to send to request sometimes but every api may not require everything but sometimes we have to pass something regarding this along with the request and whenever you get some response we will get some response data we will get some response status code and we will get some cookies we will get some headers response so many things we will get as part of the response so we need to validate all the stuff and that is part of your api testing so as a job as an api tester job what is our responsibility we have to know what kind of request we have to send to the api we have to know what kind of response it should return and accordingly we have to test the response we do lot of validations on the response and that is what api testing means that's what api testing means later the api is testing is completed then this api is integrated with the web application now this web by application will integrate with the api now whatever transactions we do this web the everything will happen through api so basically whatever the operations we'll do on the web these operations will go to api in the form of request and the api will get, uh, return the response uh api will return the data to the web in the form of response so instead of testing this web if you directly test this api by sending request and response our api testing job is done so this is what exactly api testing means so guys understood now there are so many apis are exposed from different type of companies like we have google maps api we have uh, facebook apis and also we have linkedin apis so git github apis so there are many types of apis some of them are freely we can access some of them are required some authentication information and some of them we cannot directly access because they are more uh, sensitive apis the companies they will use their internal purpose so all payment gateways also apis so when you do some kind of payment it will show you different payment options like you pay payment net banking credit card debit card right they are internally having their own apis so when you select the internet banking option it will trigger some type of api and when you use payment option is upi then that will trigger another type of api right everything is happen only through apis but as a user we cannot see those apis internally once it is integrated but at the time of testing we are able to access the apis which are developed by the developers and then we are able to test them okay so this is all about introduction part like what is an api testing what is client server architecture and uh, what is exactly api testing means what how api works what are the different type of request right so these things we have understood as part of introduction session in the next session we will try to install postman tool and then we will start manual testing of apis okay so that's the plan so is it clear everyone on today's session so i'll stop here for today's session and if you have any general things uh, we will discuss